Okay, hello everyone and welcome to a very hot and scorching Thursday afternoon. I'm in Victoria Park in Hong Kong. Today is August the 15th, 2019 and this video is very much an interruption to my regular upload schedule. So if you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I upload videos once a week. I'm currently in the middle of editing two more videos from Belgrade, so they'll be coming up over the next couple of weeks. But the reason I wanted to upload this one now is the fact that what I'm going to talk about is a very current and relevant issue and perhaps if I uploaded this in a few weeks, it would no longer be relevant to you, okay? Right, fun, so I'm going to sit down. We've got these lovely golden horses in the background. Apologies in advance. I will be mopping my brow throughout this video because it's absolutely sweltering right now. Now, as you've seen in the thumbnail, this video is all about is Hong Kong currently safe in August 2019 for foreigners slash tourists? And rather than babble on for 10 minutes about it and then give you the answer at the end, I'm just going to tell you right now what my current opinion is as of today in real time. Right now, on the whole, I do feel safe in Hong Kong. What I will say about it, and I'll go into a bit more detail about it in a moment, is that if you are not actually involved in something in a country that has these issues, you generally won't be affected. You know, think of it like when I was in Mexico, in Acapulco, or when I was in Colombia, in Medellin. If I'm not actually involved in, you know, drug cartels and drug crime, I'm not generally going to be affected by crime. Obviously, there's exceptions, but that's how I feel currently in Hong Kong. I'm going to talk a bit about the background of it and also what my experiences are so far and any advice that I can give about being in Hong Kong at this time of the year while this is all happening. So you might be asking, firstly, why am I in Hong Kong? Okay, so if you're new, um, I have been traveling full time for the last three years. I work online, so I basically hop around the world working wherever I can. And I was recently in Europe, as I said at the beginning, I was in Belgrade recently and I'm on my way to Indonesia to see a friend and basically the cheapest way I could find of getting to Indonesia with minimal layovers and all that was coming to Hong Kong. I've been to Hong Kong before, about two and a half years ago, so I did do some videos here then. You can check down in the description, there's the playlist if you want to have a look at them. And it's always been a place in the world that I've really admired in a way because Obviously it's got the British colonial history and when I walk around Hong Kong it kind of feels like the Asian London because you've got the double decker buses, you've got British companies here like Marks and Spencers, I can get food that I would get in London and also I've got some students on italki, I teach English online, um, who are from Hong Kong and they speak very passionately about British colonialism and they're passionate about British English and, and things like that and one of them, Fionn, who might be watching this, I talk to you regularly about the issues that are going on right now. So that's why I'm in Hong Kong. So what is the background of it, if you don't know? It, it feels like it's not covered in the media all over the world because I've had many subscribers, many of you, and also on Instagram, messaging me since I've been here, you know, am I okay? Am I safe? Like, worried about me? Firstly, thank you for that because that's really nice. But I wanted to go into a bit of the background just so that you know. Obviously, I'm not an expert. All right, it's just from what I've been told and from what I've seen and, and things like that. You know, media isn't always reliable. We know that. Basically, a few months ago, an extradition law was introduced by Carrie Lam, the um, CEO of Hong Kong, and that's how it started. It started with peaceful protests, as in Hong Kong residents don't want that bill to be passed because it could involve any criminals being extradited to China where it's a different legal system things like that so it started with peaceful protests but it, it's escalated in recent weeks so it's got to the point where the protesters are not as peaceful as they were and they want the resignation of Carrie Lam they want people that have been protesting who are now being classed as rioters to be exonerated effectively and also the most serious thing I think in my eyes is about and I'm gonna be I don't want to be political but I'm gonna use the word alleged just to so I don't get in trouble alleged police brutality and abuse of power so there has been many instances of locals and protesters even people that aren't protesters being beaten with batons police are using tear gas they are using tear gas in enclosed spaces and I've also heard about expired tear gas and I've read about it as well in the wet, I don't know the scientific terminology for it but you know when tear gas expires you know in terms of time it can develop into a form of cyanide so obviously it's it's extremely serious that allegedly those things are happening emphasis on that word allegedly in terms of safety here 
I have seen things. So this is where I talk about my experience so far. I've only been here a few days and primarily I've been working a lot the last couple of days, so I haven't been out that much. But at the airport, when I first got here, um, on Sunday, just gone, there were protesters in arrivals. Relatively peaceful. Yes, there was chanting and screaming and shouting. People had banners, save Hong Kong, free Hong Kong, stand with Hong Kong, hashtag, you know, that sort of thing. People giving out leaflets. I had a few people approach me, Hong Kong locals, who um, were wanted to tell me about what's happening. You know, I already knew what a little bit about what's happening, so I, I declined because I didn't want to get involved. I also didn't want to film there as well because there were, you know, officials, airport staff, and police around, so I didn't want to get into any trouble with that. And um, that's the first thing. And other than that, I've seen little things. So outside my hostel, around the corner, there is a like a pharmacy, and on the wall there is a, a like an advert of a for a beauty product or whatever, and it's got a picture of a woman. Those guys just walking off in the distance. They're putting like things over eyes of people, I'm assuming because of that um, thing with the woman that was shot in the face. So things are still happening in Hong Kong. This is to do with the fact the night I got here on Sunday, I was walking through, through the airport to go to the MTR and there were announcements due to a, an issue at a certain station, I think it was in the northwest, that MTR station has been closed. And what happened was that's where the police let off tear gas in an enclosed space underground on, a, on an MTR station and they also allegedly shot a woman in the face in the eye with like a beanbag bullet so they're using beanbag bullets I'm, like I said I'm not the expert on police weapons um, beanbag bullets rubber bullets as well shields you know all of that stuff and that caused uproar quite understandably from Hong Kong residents that police are doing things like that you know, potentially blinding someone. I'm not sure of the status of that woman at this stage. So the next day on the Monday, protests escalated at the airport. Um, people were wearing eye patches uh, to, to highlight the point about the woman that was shot in the eye and the airport was closed. And the airport has been open, closed, open, closed since then. And there's been a lot of people at my hostel that have had to come back to the hostel because their flight was canceled, things like that. So. I'm meant to be leaving on Saturday, okay, and generally these protests seem to happen at the weekend, primarily, and so I am slightly worried at the moment in terms of how I can get out of the country. I was watching a video this morning um, about protesters blocking departures and, and people, you know, innocent foreigners, tourists, wanting to get to their destinations, having to climb over people, crying, arguing, fighting with protesters. You know, it's a, it's a complex issue, um, which... I can't fully understand because I'm not a Hong Kong resident and I wouldn't claim for a second to even try and understand or relate to what people are doing. It feels like it's got out of control, it feels like it's anarchy in Hong Kong in many ways. There's people in my hostel that are talking about going to protests and um, it's just crazy in a way. Um, I think that the thing I'll say about Hong Kong residents the good thing is, is that it, it tends to be young people, I think, that are protesting more because obviously they're the next generation that are going to potentially be under Chinese rule. You know, it's the whole thing about one, um, one country, two systems, you know, and Hong Kong residents want to keep their system. They don't want to be uh, governed by Chinese law, which is extremely different. Um, so I get why they're doing it, but I think it's, in some ways, it's going too far, you know. Um, Something needs to be done right now to stop that and I well to, to lessen it or reduce it or change matters and it's only the government that can do that I think. So that's my experiences, that's the background and back to being safe. You know, I'm conscious that many of you watching might not be seasoned travellers or people that have travelled a lot or even been to Asia before, or you might be in a country in the world where Asian matters aren't really covered in the media. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Mexico and one thing I've noticed about Mexico and the US is that it's all geographical. You know, uh, in the US, there's a lot of media coverage about Mexico. The video I did in Belgrade, a lot of people are commenting saying, I didn't know anything about Belgrade. I don't know anything about the Bosnian war. So it's all geographical and I think it's the same with Asia. So perhaps the media in the US, and I know many of you watching will be from the US, I don't know if the US media is covering what's really happening in Hong Kong, so um, you might not be 
necessarily aware of safety and things like that but I think the biggest advice is just go about your business as you normally would and just be wary you know don't get involved in any situations that you don't need to be you know you're not a Hong Kong resident so you know what is the point in a way it doesn't affect you um, I think just be sensitive and understanding of the, what the locals are going through right now because it's a massive period of upheaval and I couldn't begin to understand what it must feel like being in the position that they're in um, it's quite scary in a way and I, I dread to think how this could escalate further so um, I hope this has kind of put your mind at ease in terms of coming to Hong Kong if you are planning a trip very soon just keep up to date with news updates from the airport our flights actually flying things like that and you know speak to locals if you're you know if like me you're staying in a hostel that's great because you can talk to a lot of locals um, even if you're in a hotel you know you can talk to hotel staff you know are there protests happening today just keep out of the way of it that's the best thing to do you know I, I might be investigating anything like that coming up in the next couple of videos because that's what I do I'm a youtuber so that's an exception so I, I will put myself in that position willingly I understand the risks um, but I'm not saying that you should okay so I hope this has helped um, up next like I said there'll be a couple more videos from Belgrade and then we'll be on to a couple of videos from Hong Kong before we reach day 1000 let's be happy and positive you know I'm reaching 1000 days of travel in three days I'm heading to Indonesia to see my friend Rafi I cannot wait um, let's hope I get out of Hong Kong <laughs> lovely thanks for watching and I'll um, see you next time